This is going to be video number 35 uh, in the series of videos, uh, uh, tutorial videos for our drive application. And it's also the fourth one in uh, stage seven. Let me check that. One little check. We are in stage seven and so far record 32, 33, 34. So this is going to be 35 and it's going to be part four. Let's see where we are. We are pretty much done. We just need a good way of testing because we already have a script that tests if we're hitting this invisible start trigger. We already saw that it's working by triggering the sound and enabling the finish trigger. But in order to test the finish trigger, we have to complete the lap. I don't want to drive backwards because that's not really the, you know, the way to test it. What I need is a little shortcut that I can go around and complete a lap uh, pretty much without falling into the water. So this is what this is about. I call it the developer's cheat. So this is number 18. Let's create, uh, let's mark this as done. It says something like this. Let's create a developer's cheat. So we don't really have to complete a lap to see if the count is showing and so on. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a cube as a child of whole track and give it the following transform. Let me zoom in. I'm going to call it developer's cheat. It's a child of whole track. It's a cube. So whole track, right click, 3D object, cube, name. developer cheat and let's see what parameters we're going to give it it's a cube so it's going to be uh 27 meters not 70 but 27 something it doesn't have to be exact uh and it's 100 meters in the air just like the rest of the track parts and 46 meters in front of me 46.3 you'll see in a few seconds what i'm talking about i mean actually yep yeah, we're look, looking at it like this uh here is the developer's cheat. It's like a cube. But since we're going to make it very big, it's going to be 66 meters across. Zooming out, you see how it's basically like the width of the whole track. It's going to be only 0 0.4 thick because it's just like, a, you know, a, just like the other track parts. So it doesn't have to be thick, it just needs to be big. And it's Z, it's length is going to be 130 meters and what i actually created here is like a floor that i can drive on without falling into the water the only thing i'm probably going to do is either give it a different uh, material or simply turn off its mesh renders it's like an invisible floor so like in step 19 it says uh turn off its mesh render so it becomes an invisible floor so we can fake completing a lap. And then we're gonna test it with a developer cheat, at least two ways, completing a lap successfully with cheat and um, falling into the water outside the developer's cheat. So we can see if it starts a new lap with a new count and without a new count. So let's test it. I am going to go to maximize on play and play. Now that I got the developer's cheat, I can pass through the gate, immediately make a kind of a U-turn over this invisible cheat that's preventing me from falling into the water and going right back to as fast as I can. Now I'm going to deliberately wait a little bit, so I'm making a um, record that's easy to beat it's not going to be that fast so i'm lingering a little bit okay it looks like about 37 seconds have passed and look at what just happened laps completed one and my best lap is 37 now let me quickly try to beat that i'm trying to beat 
37 seconds. Yes. And now I completed two laps and my best lap is 22 seconds. So that works. The only thing that remains to uh, test is to fall into the water because my invisible floor ends in a few. Just to see if it resets everything and good. It reset the current lap, but it still remembers that I remember that I completed two laps the best of which was 22. So this is really a good way of testing. Once that is done, I can go back to the guide, which says that once you've tested it that way in, um, if that works, we're number 23, disable the developer's cheat and build again. And after build, you know, build again, um, let's be more specific to, Oculus. Of course, we're going to make sure that it's um, the right scene. Make sure it is the Drive 7 scene, which I think already took care of, but let's check. I'm going to make sure that under File, build settings that the scene I'm about to build to. Yep, drive seven. Uh, so of course, since the developer cheat worked, I can disable it. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to disable it, ready to be tested later on. The only other thing that it says in the requirements, which is more of an advice before we're done, because this is really the last tutorial. Um, is after build, feel free to adjust the OVR camera rig. That's our camera position. That I, I think you can do that only after you actually build to the Oculus, and then you will feel if the camera is too close to the vehicle, too far, too much above, too much below, and so on. And then you can raise or lower or you know change its transform relative to the vehicle. Also, so first of all, let's deal with that. After you build for the first time, after you know you draw conclusions from it, you can say, well, it felt like I was too far from the vehicle, so I'm going to make a Z that's smaller, so I'm closer to the vehicle or further away, whatever feels good, you know, for you as far as you know the player's experience. Same thing with a Y. Right now 1.5 meters is almost like a person standing up. What if you want to play the game like feels like you're sitting down? You can lower it to about one meter. One meter is about three feet, which is how tall we are when we sit down. So all these are, you know, adjustable. I would just keep on building and building with different numbers until it feels right. Last but not least, let me actually lower it again because I think I kind of like that. Driving kind of like, you know, feels like sitting down. Um, the other thing we can adjust is the entire UI. Let's look at the options see what it says. Feel free to adjust the transform and scale of the UI. Since the whole UI is inside the vehicle as one object, all the text and everything, let me make this big. If you feel, for instance, that the UI itself is not big enough, I can take the entire UI and I can start changing its scale. It's X, it's Y, and it's Z. Let me undo, undo, and undo. Also, one more thing you might want to think about is maybe people don't want this in front of their faces. So I can move the X, I can move the UI off to the side and then turn it on the Y axis like this, about negative, I don't know, like 60 or 70 degrees and then push it even further off to the side. That way, the UI drives next to the car and it's not obstructing your view. So when we um, drive, it moves along with the car because of course it's part of the vehicle, but it's not on the vehicle. Totally up to you. You can place it anywhere you want because the UI is, that was the, um, the whole point of making it one object, just waiting for it to um, wake up so it can actually drive.
but you get the point. Uh, once this, um, you know, once you get everything to work, I would play around with the camera position and the UI position. Here we go. Um, let's see if we can drive a little bit. See, now the UI is driving with me. I don't know if you like that, but I'm just opening options. I got to tell you, since I'm so used to the UI being, you know, in the place where it was for the last few stages, it feels weird to me. But still, I wanted, you know, to show you options. I'm going to return it to the position where it was. I think it, I'll just reset it. One more thing you could do, by the way, is on the X axis, if you rotate it, you're tilting it more towards you. Like looking down at it, another option to do. Uh, but all of that can be done only once you actually build to the Oculus and kind of, you know, feel the experience. So this has been the last tutorial in our drive. This is also uh, the last uh, tutorial in the series of four courses for spatial computing, also called immersive technologies. Uh, I hope to see you in future tutorials. But this series is over.